I saw something on Twitter yesterday. It just, it made me absolutely irate. If you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen what it was, but I am just, I'm so, Western men have become such cowards. I've been sitting on these notes for a while, but we're actually gonna get into it this time, so stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hey guys, welcome to Hack Off Kami. Make sure you have notifications turned on and all that stuff, but I am so fed up with this crap. I mentioned uh, this in the Women's March videos from January. I was going to make a video analyzing the cognitive dissonance of the left. But you know what? In honor of 50,000 subscribers, we're going to launch an entire video series analyzing leftism, and every video will continue to expand on the overarching theme because 50,000. Man, you know, we gotta we gotta take off the gloves now, assuming that the gloves were ever on in the first place. So I'll just start with the tweet that I saw yesterday. Buddy over here, Sam McRoberts, who is a self-help author and a writer for Inc., tweeted a response to a woman that was talking about a study that she'd like to design that would uh, try to establish predictors of satisfaction for having or not having kids. And he replied, quote, my wife and I originally wanted three kids, had one, decided after a few years, one was plenty. I love my son, I know myself well enough now. Challenges of parenting, Having a kid is probably my biggest life regret. Wife concurs. I'm gonna jump around, so bear with me, but like, what the hell, man? That is child abuse. And to be clear, I'm not trying to say that this is representative of all leftists. The reaction to this tweet was almost universally negative, but it is a symptom of the same ideology. It's a symptom of the same narcissistic, self-centered ideology. One of my more controversial opinions that both liberals and conservatives get at me for is I think it's selfish to not have kids. I think that if you are able to raise a child, you should, out of obligation to the species, your bloodline, and to the society, assuming that you're competent enough to raise an independent functioning member of society, which unfortunately isn't as common as we'd like. Leftism kills babies under the euphemism of it's the mother's choice, it's her life, her, her, never, not one time about the baby. They are far less likely to have children than conservatives are, and you'd think that that would weed them out of the population over time, but not so much when you've got the 65 Open Borders Act and then also total control of the media. Uh, John's calling for eugenics! Like, yes, but playfully, it's a joke, calm down. But, that, but does that really shock you? Does it really shock you that the people that advocate for criminals to be allowed into the country, that advocate for mothers to be able to kill their child up to, and now even during or after birth, are you really surprised that they might not have a huge value for human life, that they might not really care about the little guy? It's because they don't. And here's the important thing that you need to distinguish. They don't care about helping other people. They care about having the appearance of helping other people. Virtue signaling, for example. There was a study published in the American Journal of Political Science that found that liberals and conservatives actually display similar levels of narcissism. However, the liberals were described as displaying exhibitionism and the conservatives were described as displaying entitlement. How splendid that we can now find out together here tonight that the party fighting for free college, free health, free tampons even, it turns out they're not the entitled party. My mistake. But the way that they were attributing entitlement to conservatives is just something I disagree with fundamentally. They asked them to respond to statements like, I demand to be treated with respect. And conservatives, I guess, were more likely not to let people walk over them. So therefore, they're more entitled. And here's the one. This really got me. They connected the fact that conservatives want lower taxes and less gun restriction to their entitlement. Because I guess conservatives feel f entitled to their money and their right to bear arms. Imagine that. Explain that to me. Explain to me how it's entitled to want to keep more of what I've earned and to want to defend myself and my family. I mean, I guess I am entitled to that, like by definition, because I am entitled to do both of those things as I see fit. I mean, the liberals, they're more likely to display exhibitionist narcissism. They react related more to statements such as, I get upset if people don't notice how I look in public, and I will show off if I get the chance. And they also feel the need to display their opinions to everybody. Everyone needs to know that I am a liberal. I care about the poor. I am noble. I am virtuous. They crave attention for these. They want everyone to know, and they want to have this perception of, I care about the downtrodden, but they don't. That's why it isn't help the poor. It's income inequality. They couldn't care less about the poor. But someone has more than they do, that's not going to sit well. That's why every time there's a crisis, profile pictures changed, status updated, they sit back and they just bathe in this dopamine of watching the likes and comments of, oh, Amy, you're so right. This is sad. Let's both be right and sad together. And that's it. Done. I have done my part. Anytime anyone tweets anything that isn't about the water in Flint, people will reply, Flint, Michigan still doesn't have water so that everyone can go, yeah, yeah, Haley, everyone else is focused on what, what Pete Davidson did at a sporting event, but you, you care about the real issues. You are the noble one. Haha, <laughs> Trump supporters started a GoFundMe for the wall. So pathetic. I mean, sure, 
Maybe it would have been better to just change our profile pictures and post on social media to remind our friends that we are, in fact, better than they are because we are virtuous. Why else would they want what's effectively open borders? They have no obligation to care about people in other countries, especially if many of them are criminals. But wait, it's trendy to look humanitarian on Facebook. Never mind. Let's pour money and do entitlement so that illegal aliens can subsist off government benefits and send their kids to American colleges. Do they care about the long-term results of this? No, not at all. The left is literally sacrificing this entire country for the short-term gratification of feeling like they are a good person. Have you ever been to one of their little protests? You get the people there and they're representing 50 different causes. I'm not making this up. You can watch the videos that I've done at these different protests. And the reason is because it's all under the same umbrella of the leftist narrative of victimization. And oh, the signs, the signs are so clever. They have to be because the purpose of the signs isn't to send a message. It's to be clever. It's to be artistic. When they make those signs, they aren't fighting against the Trump administration. They're fighting the other protesters to for the best sign slot. I mean, that's why they're always so well documented. They have to post that they were at the Women's March so that everyone knows knows that they are drowning in their own political efficacy, that they are indeed more socially aware than you are. That's why if you go to these things and you listen to the speakers, everyone there is recording it with their phones so that they can show everyone that they were there protesting and listening to the speaker instead of actually listening to the speaker. They don't care about anything that doesn't supplement their own self image. During the Me Too movement, these women came out and they talk about how they exchanged sex for roles in movies and now they're fighting back. Time's up. Are you kidding me? You were fine with prostituting yourself when it helps your career, but now that it's time to look virtuous in the public eye, you're like, wait a second, I'll go jump on this now. And that's how Hollywood works. It is the most corrupt, perverted industry in the country. And people that come out and speak about it without the support of the leftist media are blacklisted. This is anecdotal. I know someone, I know a girl that was raped by someone in her family. And during the height of the Me Too movement, everyone in her family was talking about how great it was, how survivors have to be believed. And guess what? When she came out and she told her family what had happened to her, the only people that believed her were the people that voted for Trump. Everyone else said she was lying and trying to divide the family. And she told me this because she said, she said that it made her rethink her opinion on Trump supporters because she's pretty liberal and she used to think that all Trump supporters are inherently evil. But the only people that came to her defense were Trump supporters. And that's the thing. Conservatives give more to charity. We actually care about American people. We actually care about the state of this country because we understand that the average quality of life in the world is going to decrease significantly if America falls. But liberals just want to validate their egos. Me, me, me. I'm a good person. Look at my bumper sticker. I am too important to focus on raising children. Allow me to just write my self-help book. Give me a break. Conservative narcissism is just simply leave me alone. And liberal narcissism is no, you owe me something so I can't. You owe me healthcare, you owe me college, you owe me food because I am alive and I am special and these are my rights. No, they are not. You do not have a right to any of that. And I went in deeper with that during the UN video, uh, which I'll put a link to in the description. There's a quote, I forgot to whom it is attributed, but it's something to the effect of, there are two types of people, people that want to be left alone and people that will not leave them alone. Leftists are the people who won't leave you alone. You must, according to them, subsidize the, their humanities degrees with your money because Stephanie's going to change the world with her gender studies degree. Just wait. Why do you think the government expands under leftist ideology? To keep them comfortable. That, that's Alex Jones on the Joe Rogan podcast. We're just going to keep them comfortable. They vote in favor of larger government because they feel entitled to support because they are narcissists and because they think that just because they are alive, they are entitled to be alive comfortably. And big government in theory and in promise guarantees that. But of course, it never works. And then you just happen to lose all your rights in the process. And not only that, they are so narcissistic, so convinced that anything that deviates from their worldview is wrong, both morally and empirically, that if you do not agree with them, they will shut you down, gone, deplatformed, rioters, Antifa, whatever they have to do so that you cannot speak because they don't care about what you have to say. They don't care about you. You do not matter because you are not on their team. You are not part of the group think. You are the enemy. Your right to free speech is falsely conflated to be a negative externality. Therefore, it should be shut down to protect their supposed right not to be offended. They will literally become physical. They will start crying, screaming if someone dares to present them with an opinion that was not told to them on uh, last week tonight. Even people that have come out and just said, hey, not all Republicans are terrible. They get met with this wave of backlash from these people. They are driven by their need for admiration. They are convinced 
of their right to the products of your labor, they are selfish. They do not care about you unless you are on their team and they will only use you as long as it can benefit them in their agenda. That's why they hate America. They don't believe in the concept of being American. They don't believe in any sort of nationalism that could unify the country. The viewpoint of the right is essentially that it's the American people versus the people that intend to take your rights away. The left views it as them versus any dissent. And they've got the help of their media too. Why do you think they hate white men so much, really? White men are probably the most conservative demographic, if not at least top three. But then you've got these little, these insecure beta males that white knight because they have no hope of competing in the sexual hierarchy against dominant males. So they shill for feminism. They pretend to be allies to these leftist movements. They have no value. So instead they're tolerant. Hey, that's my personality trait. I'm tolerant. I don't give a damn about anything. Oh, you're not tolerant. Okay. Well, I'm intolerant of your intolerance. So I'm going to like call you a racist and try to get you fired or something. <laughs> that's that's part two. We're going in too deep right now, but leftism is insecurity. That's the next one. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and subscribe to my channel by clicking my face down there. We are now at 50,000, 50,000 subscribers. That is insane. Everyone subscribed to this channel has an IQ of 10,000. This is just a fact. It's been proven scientifically. It's irrefutable. Except there are people subscribed to the channel just so they can dislike the videos and leave comments like, John, I, I understand these things and you are wrong. It should be me in the studio with the Jesus bobblehead and the authentic Springfield rifle. It's like, you know what? You can go do that. You can. That's the beauty of the free market. You can go buy the Jesus bobblehead. You can go buy the authentic rifle that killed actual fascists during World War II. I'm not sure if it was the Pacific or the European theater, but it's like... I mean, speaking of combat, we're going to continue the fight. We're going to pour one out. We're going to press F to pay respects to our fallen comrade PewDiePie. No one sees us as a legitimate threat in this fight. They're always like, PewDiePie T-Series. Pewdie it's like, John, Do <laughs> we're coming for him. I don't know if it's next week or next month. I predict it's going to be before uh, the 2020 election, but we're, we're going we're gonna to take over YouTube and it's going to be great. So uh, yeah, you're going to want to be subscribed to see that. Technically, you have to be subscribed in order for that. It's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if everyone watching does subscribe, eventually it will come true. Not to suggest that that's dependent because, you know, part of me wants to say, I'm rambling, but part of me wants to say that it'll happen regardless of whether or not you subscribe. But it's also like, you know, it kind of, it's, it's predicated on the idea that you subscribe because the metric of the competition is subscribers. So it is necessary uh, to some degree and... I mean, yeah, so. Now I'm curious, cause like now, now I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just edit this out in post-production, but now I'm curious to see like how this affects the average length of the video. Like I wanna, I wanna look at the analytics and see who kept watching as I continued to ramble about absolutely nothing. Um, because I can't, I, I mean, I have the power to do that. I have this platform now, which is insane. And sometimes I say good things and they're good and informative and entertaining and people enjoy the content and I've never actually just rambled and said absolutely nothing like I am now. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.